Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about a very popular type of snake, the milk snake. Now you might be wondering how a snake has anything to do with milk, and the reason why they're called the milk snake is because of a legend that started many, many years ago when farmers first discovered the snake in their barns next to their cows. And the farmers thought that this snake must be wrapping around the legs of their cows to climb up and steal the cow's milk overnight. So they named this the milk snake and they despised this snake as a result. But of course, snakes don't drink milk. They can't if they tried. But unfortunately, we learned that too late and the name had already stuck. So we still call them the milk snake today. Milk snake belongs in the Lampropeltis genus, which is Latin for shiny shields, referring to their very shiny scales all over their bodies. Now we do have milk snakes up in the Minnesota, Wisconsin area where I'm from, but our milk snakes are tan with brown blotches. They look a lot different than these, and the further down south you go in the United States, the brighter their colors get, and the more those blotches turn into bands around their bodies. This is a Nelson's milk snake, which is native to Mexico, so it's like the polar opposite of the milk snakes that live up where I'm at. And the reason for those visual differences is because up north, we have rattlesnakes that are tan with brown spots that the milk snake impersonates, and down south, the milk snake impersonates the venomous coral snake. You can house a milk snake in anywhere from a 20 gallon long to a 40 gallon aquarium depending on what size of milk snake you have. Although today I'll be putting mine in my snake rack so I'm just going to set up this bin for him. I usually recommend aspen fibers for bedding as it holds the shape well if they dig tunnels. Although I'm trying a new product that just came on the market. This is hemp based and so we're going to see what I think of it after using it for a little while here. But that's why it looks a little different than normal. You want to give them between one and two inches for a milk snake this size that we'll be putting in here after it's set up. And of course more than that for a larger milk snake, just basically enough so that they can completely bury themselves if they want to be hidden. The next thing we have to do is use Prevenamite and we have to spray down the bedding as this will prevent mites from being in the bedding. And this is a once a month type treatment, although you do have to cover up the bedding and let it sit for a little while. So we're going to let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we're going to uncover it and let it sit for an additional 10 minutes to completely ventilate as this is an anti-parasite um, treatment which can be bad for the snakes if they get into cl too close of contact with it. Now that that's done we get to set up the enclosure itself. Now this setup and this, these tips work for not only milk snakes which are technically a king snake uh, but they also will work for generally any other colubrid as all of their setups are very similar. When I slide this into my snake rack, this end will be the warm end that lines up above the heat tape, and this will be the cool end. And in your enclosure for your snake, you want the warm ends to be in the mid to upper 80s with a cool end of room temperature. So you want that thermal gradient so that the snake can thermal regulate and be comfortable anywhere inside of the enclosure. I'm going to add a hide on the warm end and you also want to hide on the cooler end so they can stay hidden no matter where they, what temperature they want to be at. And just for fun, I'm going to bury a paper towel tube in the bedding to create a bit of a, a tunnel for him, just for extra enrichment. And if you want, you can use paper towel tubes, uh, toilet paper tubes, or something more reusable like PVC piping. In this corner on the cool end, I am going to put a water dish and last but not least, up here on the warm end, I will put a humidity box. And if you don't know how to make one of these, just click the link above and that will show you how. But you want to put this on the warm end because that will keep the humidity nice and high inside. If you want, you can also add some structures like driftwood or plants for the snakes to climb up and around. But I think this is good for my milk snake here, so I'm going to leave it as is. But you're more than welcome to if you have space add some more things and structures for your snakes. Just make sure you have enough room for them because you don't want to overcrowd your snake. And now it's time for the snake itself. We'll see where he goes. Directly into a cave, of course. Now it's important to note that some types of milk snakes get much larger than others, so make sure you do your research on the subspecies of milk snake that you're interested in to make sure that you have an appropriately sized enclosure for it. And as I stated earlier, these milk snakes are technically a type of king snake, meaning that they can be cannibalistic, so make sure that you house them separately. 
Being a king snake also means that they usually have very great appetites. So when you're feeding your milk snake, be careful around them because they get into what I call feeding mode. And it's not that they're a mean snake, they just think that everything is food at that moment. So just be a little careful when you pick them back up after feeding them and moving them back into their enclosure if you feed them in a separate container. But overall, milk snakes are awesome pet snakes, even great beginner snakes too, I would say. So if you're looking for the next beautiful snake to add to your collection, consider a milk snake. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.